Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Labs. So, uh, in the last session, we have uh, seen promises and uh, we have seen that how create a promise, what are different states of promise like pending, resolve and reject. Whenever the promise is uh, resolving the promise, it's giving us a value and if it is rejecting, it's rejecting with a reason and it's giving me the error object here. Okay, so now what we have to do today is uh, we have to see the concept of promise chaining as well. So promise chaining means that whenever you have to call a promise based function, it will return something like resolve or reject. And then I can create multiple then blocks or multiple catch block also. I can create it here. And this then block or every then block might give you or can give you the respective output or you can say a respective promise. Again, this then promise will be having two states, either reject or accept. If you are accepting it or resolving it, then the output of this, the first then will behave like an input for the second then. Same thing, the output of this then number one will behave like an input for then number two and so on. So every then can return a separate promise also. So what we will see that we will start the promise number zero. We will create a promise function or we will create one asynchronous function which is giving me a promise and then we will see that it is resolving or rejecting if it is resolving then again we are returning another promise from then number zero then one then two and then three like that so let's see how to do this so i'll give you one very simple example and very nice example so that you will understand better so i have created one uh, let's see chain.js a file that is already created and then i'm going to create a function here for example let's see <coughs> let's write a function here and the function name is, uh, I'm writing, let's see, get uh, even number. Simple, we know that how to get an even number. Even number means a number which is totally divisible by two. Okay. So get an even number is a function that I'm creating. And I'm saying that you have to give me the value. And uh, let's see, you have to give me the delay time also. So that we can use this particular delay time in the set timeout function that we are going to use for the asynchronous operation. So I'll do one thing here that uh, <clears throat> I simply say, okay, fine. I really want to return a promise. So this function get even number will return a promise. So we already seen that we have to create the object of promise class. So let's create a promise. And this promise class is saying that I have to accept two op variables here, the two function parameters we have to create it here. That is, let's see, one is the resolve. And if the promise is resolved, we will call this callback function resolve. Otherwise, we will call the reject over here like that. And then I'm going to supply it here like this, right? Then I'm going to create one set timeout. This will behave like an asynchronous operation function for me. And then I'm saying, okay, uh, let's create another callback. And then here I'm writing with if whatever the value that you are giving to me, this particular function, let's see if I'm giving five or three or two or whatever. If this particular value is modulus two, which is totally divisible by two, it means the remainder is coming as a zero. Then in that case, what exactly you want? Then in that case, I really want to call my resolve function, right? And then I'm going to return this particular value, right? If you missed the last session, what do you mean by promise? How to create the syntax and how to write the code with the promise and everything, please watch it. And then now we are using the exactly similar kind of code returning a new promise here and then if the promise is justified if the condition is justified or a boolean is equal to true in that case then i'm resolving this particular <clears throat> uh, promise here if it is not divisible by two then in that case i'm going to call the reject here so how to call a reject i'm going to supply what i'm going to supply a error object here or error message here along with this message some string message that value is not even number okay something like this let's see i'm supplying it here perfect and whatever the delay time that if you really want to use it here that delay time that we can use it with the set timeout so in the set timeout that i'm going to write that this is the delay that the user will pass the delay to us here okay and then i'm putting these semicolons and uh, this promise function is ready such a simple function that i have created here if completely divisible by two okay call resolve otherwise call reject with resolve what we have to do we have to return the value and with reject means we have to give a reason that why are you rejecting this particular promise why are you not fulfilling that so we have to use the 
promise a chain here, right? The chain concept that we have to perform here. So this is my method name. So my method name is get even number. So I'm just going to call this particular method. This method says you have to give me the value. So let's see, I'm giving the value as a four and then I'm writing, let's see, 1000 of milliseconds of time like this because delay time is 1000 millisecond here. Okay, like this, sorry, not the curly braces. And now this will return what? This is giving me a new promise. And then we have to create a handler. It means we have to use a then function here that we have already seen in the last program also or in the last chapter also. And then I'm going to store it in some result over here. So you can create any variable. Let's say I'm going to take a result. So what will happen? Four is given to this guy. And then it's calling, creating a promise here. And then it's writing that four is modulus two. Four is totally divisible by two. Yes, condition is satisfied. It means we are going to resolve this particular promise. And then the, this particular value or whatever the value that you are giving to us or whatever the value that you are passing, we are passing the same value here to the then and then storing in the result function or result uh, handler here or key here that we have written here or it's a kind of variable but then is a handler for us and then i'm writing that okay fine then what do you want to do with this particular result so let's say i simple say that okay fine the simple write console dot log and then i really want to print this particular value here so here i'm writing that for example uh, let's see in my step number one <clears throat> getting the result what which result getting the result comma and whatever the result that you are getting it here okay so i'm writing the getting the result with even number okay just printing some message here like that perfect and then what i'll do now i really want to use a promise chaining concept so in this particular then can i call this get even number one more time yes that also we can do it so if you see the example once again here the diagram here that then is also calling the same promise and giving me another promise to the second then. So that's what I'm writing then is calling the this particular function which is responsible for returning the promise get even number. And now in get even number this time I'm passing I'm calling this guy and I'm also writing here that okay I want to return. So you have to write a return keyword get even number and this time let's see for example I'm passing three comma and then I'm writing let's see up to 2000 milliseconds. So what will happen in that case? I'm just simple returning it. So then function or then handler is returning another promise by calling this particular function. So now I can use this particular dot then once again here. So what will happen? Whatever the output is coming from the first then block, it will behave like an input for the second then block. So again, in the then block, I'm writing create another result variable. And what exactly this result value, the result value which is coming from this particular function that you are calling that is the output or return of the first then. So in that case, I'm writing then and the result and the result is what? So in that case, obviously that the three, we are passing three modulus to equal to equal to zero. No, that in that case, it will return the reject. It means it is going to call the reject or it's going to uh, reject the promise with this particular error. So in that case, again, I'm saying that uh, Let's see, I'm printing the same message here, but here I'm saying step number two. But if you are passing, for example, especially in this particular program, if you see this carefully, that uh, here, this function is getting called with three, it will reject. So it will not come inside the then. So then I can write another catch here like this. And then if the promise is rejected, then the error is coming inside the catch block directly. And then let's say I'm storing inside some error here. A variable here and then i can print anything here like let's see for example that this is my a console dot let's see error that i can print it here instead of log and then you can write that uh, promise chain error and whatever the error that you are getting so what we can do this particular error perfect and uh, after that the catch block is also uh, done here if you see this carefully that the function that we have written, this function is actually responsible for the promise return. And then we are calling this particular get even number function once again and passing four. Four is a value which is totally divisible by two. So it will resolve the uh, promise and then it will come inside the then block. It will print this particular message here. Then I'm saying, okay, again, call this same function and return at uh, this time I'm passing three and return the promise. So promise will be fulfilled or rejected. No, this time 
if condition is not satisfied it will come to the else part it will be rejected so that's why the whenever the promise is giving me the rejection it will always go to the catch block here right like this so when i run this program let's quickly run it and uh, let's go to the terminal i simple call it here so i'm simple writing node and the file name is change.js so you see first it will take around 1000 milliseconds of time it's saying getting the result with the event number four exactly step number one see same statement is getting printed here step number four and the result is four that we are getting it here and the next time again we are passing three three means a rejection value is not an even number it says that value is not an even number here and then after that the delay we are passing of around uh 2000 milliseconds it means after two seconds this message is getting printed here perfect so let me clear the console and let me run it again see this carefully once again getting the result for four then again the promise chain error is coming because of number three then in that case if i'm passing let's see result uh, number six over here so in that case in both the cases my condition will be satisfied and will always resolve the promise so see this four and then getting the result for even number six also so we are not getting the rejection from the promise in that case so I hope this is clear that this is a promise chain. So you can write n number of uh, then blocks. You can write it here, right? If you really want to call this particular function one more time, you can just uh, call it here. If you really want to print a, a significant message also, that also you can print it. You simply write error dot a message here. Then in that case, if I'm passing, let's see seven one more time here. Seven is not totally divisible by two. Then in that case, let's see what happens. So see the four for the four is... Uh, obviously uh, accepting the promise and resolving the promise but uh, for the second one is a seven seven for say is that okay value is not even number here i hope this is clear now okay so this is about the promise chain so you can create n number of then blocks n number of cache blocks you can write it here according to your use case so i hope this is clear that's all for this video i'll see you in the next video in the next video we will talk about more things like promise all promise raise and then we will see async and await concept also, how to use it with the promises. Thank you so much, guys.